Today is Floss Tube, Anna, aka Moranalyst, back with another stitching update. It's January 1st, 2020. 2021, oh my goodness. Nearly put us back at the start of this year. Christ, who needs that? <laughs> May 2021 be better than 2020. Um, welcome to everybody who's returning. Welcome to anybody who's new. I hope everybody managed to have as best of Christmas and or whatever you celebrate this holiday season as was possible in your part of the world. Uh, I, for one, had a very low-key New Year's. My kids wanted to stay up to midnight. I uh, didn't feel like I needed to, so I went to bed. They stayed up. Um, I don't even think they did anything exciting. Read the book till midnight just to say they could. That's about it. Uh, I have gotten a fair bit of stitching done in the last two weeks since I filmed. And as I hoped, I did have one last finish for 2020. So let me pull that out first. I have filmed a segment with some up close shots of this. So I'll just show you an overview here at the moment. Celtic summer, lavender and lace. My tropical sunset conversion. And the conversion details will be linked below in the description box. I have already done the blog post, so it's all done. I have no excuse. If I forget to link it, email me and holler at me, because it was just a purely a um, forgot on my part. But she's all done. All her beads are in. I am super thrilled with how she's come out for my first effort at a big full-on conversion. I'm pretty stinking pleased with how she's come out. I show you in the close-up segments, there's one particular color of beads that I really, you know, if I'd had infinite time at a craft store, I probably would have swapped out. But she's pretty stinking cool. I like her. So that is Celtic Summer all done on a 28 count cash out linen I dyed myself. Uh, I will do the other seasons. I do not have the Noel Christmas one, but I will do the other uh, seasons eventually. At the moment, I um, am now up to two more projects I intend to start sooner rather than later. I really haven't got room in the schedule for another Celtic lady. And besides, I really haven't got a clear idea in my own head what I want to do with the other three ladies yet. So one day when inspiration strikes, I will start one of the other um, Celtic ladies. But in the meantime, she will just go in the to be fully finished someday bucket. And we will fully finish her someday when we have all the companion pieces. G'day, Floss Tube. Just popping in for a quick look at the final um, finish for Celtic Summer and the Tropical Sunset Conversion. As you can see, she's got a whole ton of beads in her now. Um, so the full details of what color beads I've used for what, I will link a blog post um, for you. So I won't even try and you know detail that kind of thing now. But you can see, essentially, we wound up with a uh, sort of mid orange uh, bead that matched the center part of her dress and a real dark brown bead that matched that same section of dress and a blue bead that matched the outer robe and the flowers and stuff. If I had, you know, an endless store to look at things and pick again, I think I would try and find something that wasn't frosted for this particular bead. Um, I really generally like the way it turned out, but I just think it looks a bit muted compared to what I had in my head. And I think having a bit more of a shiny blingy bead in that particular color would have helped. Um, so this gold is not, I had debated leaving the originally charted bead in there. Um, it was kind of a champagne colored. I ended up swapping it out 
for the gold gold the 557 to match the gold metallic that went in um, I think the the champagne would have gone nicer with the original colors but it just wasn't quite right with my conversion uh, there was one bead I left the same, the green that clearly was meant to match the greens around the medallions and in through her hair and stuff that I left unaltered. So you can see this through here, it's, it actually shows up with a bit more shine in the camera than it does in person. I think this is a you know perfect example where it would have been nice to have just a bit more bling through her hair and it's very muted because the green and the orange are both um, sort of a matte finish um, but generally acres and acres of beads through all here um, you can see the thread colors again I won't give you the the details on the thread colors I used because those will all be in the blog, blog post there were a few of the really dark brown beads charted in here and I swapped them out for either the blue or the orange to make them look more like flowers because I didn't think the dark brown was super appropriate. Um, for the most part, everything else was just a direct swap of whatever the original bead was to my new color. Uh, you can see acres of those gold. I'm pretty sure you need two packs of whatever bead you use through that dress. Um, there you see I put my initials there, acres of beads, and all the way out to the side. So in the end I'm pretty pleased with how she turned out. Um, this is done on a 28 count cashel linen. Um, dyed myself. I wrote the recipe for the writ dyes on the blog post and it's already gone out of my brain so I can't tell you what they are. Anyway, there you have it. Celtic Summer by Lavender and Lace. The last finish just squeaked in for a finish in 2020. See you back in the main video. I did a little bit of stitching around town in the last couple of weeks. So that means Oliver's stocking came out. This is, I should show you first, a Stony Creek uh, stocking. Uh, it was summer 2018 issue. Um, so that's what she'll look like. <laughs> and that's what it looks like now. Now, from memory, I did a fair bit of effort into getting some of those green trees finished up. Uh, I think the wreath might be new. Pushed up the lighthouse a fair bit and added that the start of the bird and the post and stuff down there. It's a bit kitty wampus. Show you straight on. Uh, this is a 32 count Murano fabric, even weave. Um, I do tend to prefer to stitch on linen, but um, I felt like in a stocking, the uh, even weave would be more durable than a linen, um, take a bit more abuse. So I thought this, um, I had some of this fabric for one of my other projects, um, and I thought it would be perfect with this printed sort of mottling in the background for this project. So that's what it got. And fairly good progress. We um, had a couple of days at the airport. It had one day down at uh, the beach. We took my in-laws down to, there's one particular beach on our local island you can't get to with the rental cars because the road's pretty cruddy, four-wheel drive only sort of thing. And we went down there with them. Um, the guy ahead of us on the road got stuck, so rather than wait for him to get unstuck and, you know, get back up through the same spot he'd gotten stuck going down, we just decided to park it on the side of the road and walk the rest of the way. By the time we got down to the beach, he was had gotten himself loose, and, but there was like a backlog of three cars trying to come up the hill and us trying to come down the hill, and I just thought, yeah, 
I'm not sitting here waiting for him. Um, yeah, it's that road is not the best road at best of times, and currently it is an absolute nightmare of disrepair. So I don't know whether there's any intention to fix that or not, but I don't expect we will be going down it anytime soon unless there's some work on it. But it was nice to sit down the bottom and uh, work on the stocking. The other thing I worked on um, a fair bit was the Tinctorium Mandala. So this was also on my goal list to finish this inner part one section for the year. I haven't quite made it. Um, I've started adding these water basins this morning, uh, but I did. All these little critters are backstitched, all these flowers and stems are in, and all the grasses on the, that the critters are sitting in are in. So that was a major accomplishment to get all that done in 2020. So at this point, I think all I've got left to do to finish this section is the one last basin needs its blue. A fair bit of back stitching through these other three leaves to make them match that one. And the basins have some back stitching in the metallic. Um, things to note about this one. Note, generally, you know, a lot of people will, um, by the PDFs for Chatelaines that you know oh you really must have the PDF in order to, to see particularly when it comes to the back stitching um, but I know when I was reading the pattern for this uh, this section particularly the grasses like some of the bunnies and hedgehogs were done with marked to do with that darker green of the stems rather than the light green. And some of them were marked to do with the light green. I think it's just par for the course. With a pattern this complicated, it's really hard for any designer to get them 100% accurate. It's almost impossible. And then when I was trying to figure out what color to, um, these were meant to be backstitched in. There was about three different colors on the chart that looked close to the line work there. So I still had to go back to the text description that Martina gives to try and figure out which one of those blue ones, blue lines, was that actually meant to be outlined in. So I guess all I'm trying to say is that really I'm not convinced the PDF patterns are the godsend that some people will tell you they are in terms of being able to figure out what the back stitching and stuff is meant to be. Certainly the ability to zoom in and stuff is sometimes very, very handy, particularly with the small over one stitches and stuff, but back stitching, deciphering, I'm not convinced. I find, you know, the text description from Martina and the, the photos from the Chatelaine Gallery are invaluable. I, yeah, I'm always pulling that up to see what they say. So, one last look at all those details. So stinking pleased. Uh, the intention is now to not put these away until part one is finished and that back stitching goes in there. Um, I did all four corners in the darker scroll work because the silver bit wasn't showing up in an earlier video. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty stinking pleased with how close I've come to finishing part one on that one. So I'll finish it up and then I'll put it away and maybe pull one of the other shadow lines out for a bit. Um, I think I have decided, I've been debating all this time with the Hawaiian mandala, but I think I'm going to have to have another go at those hills. I'm not that fussed with what I did last time. So I'll probably experiment on a different corner. But I think I'm going to have to rip that first one out, which is kind of a nuisance. I don't want to rip that out. But I'm not going to be happy with it the way it is. So it's got to come out. 
Uh, the last thing I worked on this week, at least I'm pretty sure I worked on it this week, is, oh, I forgot to mention that the Chatelaine is done on a 28 count cashel as well. Um, that one I dyed myself. Mm. This is Bella Filipina's Enchantress of the Abyss. And working on this one for my middle daughter in lieu of a stocking. So I think I've mostly got most of her hair in now. A little bit obviously around her head. Um, but yeah, just, just pushing through a bit of progress. It started to, you know, add a few other colors just because I was tired of purple and brown. But I haven't worked on this one in a week or more, so I don't exactly remember where I was thinking I was going with it. This is done on a 28 count opal. Where is the name? Oh, Midnight Mermaid by Under the Sea Fabrics. So it's, it's a variegated. So, yep, that's how she's at. And I suppose I probably better pull this one out and give it some more attention. But um, like I said, I got a few things to start. So I don't know that I will get there in the next five minutes. So I think that's everything I've worked on for the couple of weeks since I last filmed. I did um, get a bit of treasure that has come in. So... Um, I should have taken these out of their plastic. I had to get some uh, Karen Water Lilies to go in that Enchantress of the Abyss. So those two have come in. Some lovely colors there. Nice variegation. Um, and also a bit of metallic to go in her. So as per the last Bella Filipina I did, I've swapped the... Um, some of the Krynik out for treasure braid, but I wasn't able to find a good conversion for some of them, so there is some in the braids that are um, the original Krynik colors, so we shall see. Actually, I think this one is meant to go in her hair, and I've actually got two different options that are coming, but there's another one that, the other one to check is still coming. So I won't put this in until that arrives and I can actually see both of them against the fabric. So those little treasures were for Enchantress of the Abyss. Um, and hold on a second, I left it over where I can't reach it. Mm. Somewhere, oh, when I was working on Celtic Summer, I wanted one last pack of beads just to um, see what I wanted to do. And so I ordered that pack of beads, decided not to use them, and thought, well, beads can't come on their own. So I picked uh, Winter Geisha by Joan Elliott up, trying to do it without the glare. Um, so this will just go in the Sunday pile because, again, I've got too many other things I'm starting at the moment, but um, that came from Journey of a Stitcher, and, you know, it's, it's you can't just send one pack of beads. Gotta have some other treasures in there. Um, the last thing I've got to show you is a total impulse thing. I recently signed up to the a Stitch in Time Facebook page, and they posted that they had this book. And, ooh, actually, it's really nice blues with that blue. Um, if you've been hanging around, you know, I've been kind of looking around for a project to do that's more traditional embroidery and have a bit of a go. So I'm going to do these. Um, this is going to be my first project. So... This book arrived just in time for Christmas, so I've been digging around. Um, I'm actually, the book gives several color schemes. Let me pull up. Well, 
That's actually the color scheme that I'm going to do, which is slightly different than the one that was on the color. The shells are light, um, whereas on the cover they were browns. Um, anyway, I think there's six different color schemes in the book to choose from. Uh, it's a lot of the text is both um, Italian and English. So, you know, the English translation is not perfect, but it is well understandable. Um, I have been doing some reading through the various stitches and stuff, and as much as it's clearly not native English, I can comprehend what the intention was. So as far as I'm concerned, that's good enough. Um, Yeah, I want to show you the individual map things because I expect that's a bit like showing a chart. Um, but she does definitely give, you know, sort of instructions on do these bits first and do some other bits second and how to work them out. So I think for a starting project, for somebody who has zero clue what they're doing, I will be able to manage to make this work. Between the book and YouTube, we'll get it sorted. So you can see... Uh, you know, she's got sort of working the shells up in, um, in steps. So, we shall have a go. My intention is to basically do them a bit like Scrabble tiles. I, I think I'll just pick the word beach, because um, it's all the letters of the alphabet. I'll just pick the word beach to start with, because, you know, it's kind of the appropriate theme. I will do individual letters, and then I haven't exactly decided how I'm going to finish them, but it will basically be individual so that you can rearrange the letters to make different words should you care to. So yesterday I went just off to Spotlight, bought some cheap 100% um, cotton. Yeah, zero idea. Beyond the fact that it was 100% cotton, I specifically looked for that because this came white, white, and I dyed it about $5 a meter. Given that I have zero clue what I'm doing at five bucks, I can afford to make a lot of mistakes and, um, you know, just I'll write pitch it if I need to. Um, this I have thrown in a takeaway container full of the pearl gray writ dye is the same uh, color that I used to do the linen for the Japanese moss garden. Obviously, I've let it model a fair bit more this time. Um, I just didn't want it to be absolute stark white, but the grays that were in this same real cheap fabric um, were too dark, I thought, for what I wanted. So. Easiest solution is just to throw it in some rip dye. And honestly, I think I only left it like five minutes max in a light bath. Um, I did kind of I put it in, dump dye on it five minutes, you know, then shift it around and muck it up and scrunch it up in different directions, dump another load of dye on it. I think I did that about three times. Um, and the concentration of the dye, sometimes it was darker, sometimes it was lighter, just to try and get some variation. But, so that I would probably start, I'd really like to turn around and sit down and start at the Savo. I'm not going to, but it's going to take all my restraint to do that. Um, hopefully very, very soon, hopefully before the next um, time you film. The other start I have to do is the one... Um, that my daughter is charting for me. I will have to see whether she can, I assume she'll be able to generate a color preview of what it's going to look like in the end, because otherwise you'll have no idea what we're aiming for. Um, I think that's about it for treasures and plans. I will um, catch you guys in a couple of weeks. Um, hope everybody makes it back to work and back to real world life um, well enough. Um, kids back to school, grown-ups back to work. I know I'm uh, not looking forward to January 4 when I have to go back.
It's been nice to have a week off. But in any case, I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Take care. Talk to you then. Bye.